All right, so 6-3, we learned about where, well, we learned what a median was, where the medians meet, and then we learned what an altitude was and where the medians, where the altitudes meet. So the centroid is where what meets? Medians. The medians. And the centroid theorem is the what theorem? Like, what's, what's it say? Okay, and then what's true about the distance from the centroid? What's the measurements? Two -thirds. It's the two-thirds. So vertex to centroid is two-thirds of the length of the whole median. So if it gives you that, obviously these are centroids, that means that this point here is the centroid, that means that those are the medians. So if BG is 9 and it wants you to find BF, what do you do? Uh, yeah. So like 9 divided by 2 is 4.5. Yep, so that would be so what GF is, right? Yeah. And then? And you get? Good. All right, then the second one says BD is 12. Find AD. I don't know whose hand was up first. Santi, go ahead. Well, if D is in the middle of A and B, I assume AD would be 12 also. Good. The, well, it's in the middle because you know that that's a median, and if it's a median, it hits it at the midpoint, right? So that's 12. Nick? Oh, wait, no. Okay, and then the last one says CD, which is this whole segment here is 27, and it wants you to find GC, Mateus. 18. How do you know that? Two -thirds. Good, two-thirds of 27. If it had asked for like GD, then it would be nine, right? So it just depends on what it's asking for. From the vertex to the point is two-thirds the whole thing. All right, four. So you can find the centroid. Like I could literally find the midpoint of this segment and then connect the side to it or, or connect the vertex to it. I could find the midpoint of this and I connect and I could find the midpoint of this, which we're eyeballing, but you could also actually find those segments and connect it, right? And if it lies on a point, it's not so bad. Okay, you could find the coordinates that way. Good, but a shortcut is if you, one, don't have the graph, or two, don't have, it's not on the exact point, then if you add up all the x's and divide by three and add up all the y's and divide by three, it will give you the centroid. So if this coordinate point, this is negative one, negative two, this is negative three, one, this is one, one, two, three, four, five, five, and this is one, two, three, four, five, negative three. I would do negative three plus one plus five over three, which is three over three, and that's one. And then I would do one plus five plus negative three over three, and you'd get three over three, and that's one. So that's a shortcut. If you don't have a graph, or if it's like not exactly on the point, then you could do that. Yep. I gave you a graph on the questions that you have points questions on, but it still could be a fraction. So you would want to know how to do it that way. Yep. Not if you, if you're doing it the first way, you could find two and where they cross works. Yeah. But you can't find the midpoint. Like you can't use the shortcut without doing all three. Yeah. So you would want to keep it exact. I mean, for the quiz, now you know this shortcut. Just do the shortcut and keep it exact. So it would be like if it was 0 0.3, it would be something over 3. That's fine. Yeah. But homework, don't stress about it. Yeah. Okay. And then it says which type of triangle has its ortho center on the triangle, which is what? A right triangle. And most specifically, if it's an ortho center, it connects which type of segments? Ortho center is the point of concurrency of what segments? The, the, the height. Altitudes. What? Altitudes, right? And so the altitudes would meet not only like on the triangle, but where on the right triangle do the altitudes meet? On the triangle. On the triangle? On the right. At the right angle. So even more specifically. Because on the, like, so think about it like your test or your quiz could ask you to find where the centroids meet, where you could add them and divide by three. 
They could say, where does the ortho center meet? If it's a right triangle, it's going to be at the right angle. If it asks you where the circum center was, then it's on the right triangle, but it's at the midpoint of the hypotenuse. So those are ones that your coordinates could be asked for. Is the puzzle 50 or dash? It is. Okay, this was, so kind of piggybacks right off of that. This is the last question in the homework. It said, plot the points, determine whether the ortho center is in, on, or outside, and then find the coordinates of the ortho center. So because this is a right triangle, they are on the triangle, or the ortho center would be on the triangle. Most specifically, it would be here, it would be here, and it would be here, which means at the right angle, which is negative 3, 2. If it was the circumcenters, I'd find the, cent the midpoint of the hypotenuse, and that's what it would be. So we're going to go through the review. I want you to, again, open that chart because we're going to fill that out in a second, but we're going to do 6-1 first. We'll do 6-1, and then we'll get into 6-2 and 6-3. We'll blend together. So your quiz covers 6-1, 6-2, 6-3. It is 10 questions, okay? It is tomorrow. In 6-1, we talked about the angle bisector theorem and then its converse, and then we talked about the perpendicular bisector theorem and its converse. Actually, we did those in reverse order, but same thing. So the angle bisector theorem says if a point lies on the angle bisector, it is equidistant from the sides of the angle. So if I had an angle drawn and then I had its angle bisector drawn, any point on this angle bisector would be equidistant from the sides of the angle. And in order to show that distance, you'd need the right angle. There was a lot of setting things equal to each other in 6-1. The converse literally said the converse. If a point is equidistant from the sides of an angle, then it lies on the angle bisector. So for those, it would be beneficial to know their names because obviously their names are less in length than that, writing that whole thing out. Like if it said find X and you set them equal to each other and then it said justify how you found it, you would say angle bisector theorem. Then came, well actually first came, the perpendicular bisector theorem, which said if a point lies on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So if I had like this pink line, which is the perpendicular bisector to AB, then any point on that pink line would be equidistant from the endpoints. So if I had C here, I could say AC would equal CB or BC. So those two would be equidistant or any other point along that perpendicular bisector. All right, then converse is the flip of that. If 
a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then it lies on the perpendicular bisector of that segment. So again, learn the names, perpendicular bisector theorem or converse, and then that way you could use it. Again, if you were like setting, I don't know if it was X and 10, and you said X equals 10 and it said Y, it would be the original, that the perpendicular bisector theorem. And then if you were proving that C was on the angle bisector, then it would be its converse. Questions on any of that 6-1 stuff? All right, so between, this is like 6, 2, and 6, 3. Between 6, 2 and 6, 3, we learned about four types of segments. So I'm going to go in the order we learned about them. The first one was the perpendicular bisector. The second one was the angle bisectors. And those were both in 6, 2. And then we did medians and altitudes. Those were in 6, 3. So the perpendicular bisector is perpendicular to a side at its midpoint. So if I wanted to find one using the diagram, I would find the midpoint and I would go perpendicular. So it would look something like that. We're going to add the other one so we can get the visual on the point of concurrency, but that's what it would initially look like. What? God bless you. Yeah. Which part? So you just have to find the midpoint of each side and then, which you won't have to construct it. Okay. Yeah, you won't have to construct it. You would just have to be able to like maybe identify it from a diagram. Yeah, and know its definition because you're going to get always sometimes never questions on this stuff. Yeah. On which one? Perpendicular to a side at its midpoint. The point of concurrency is called what? What's the first one we learned? Circumcenter. And its location. So where is the circumcenter located? Not always in the middle, right? This one is what? In, on, out. So if it's acute, it's in. If it's right, it's on. And if it's obtuse, it's out. If it's right, not only is it on it, but it's the midpoint of the hypotenuse. And then the theorem attached to the circumcenter says from the circumcenter to each vertex is congruent or equal or equidistant, anything like that. So if I were to continue to like work around on that triangle, find the midpoint of each side, I'm going to eyeball it, but find the midpoint of each side 
and then draw a segment that's perpendicular from that midpoint. It would be something like that. These would each be, this is perpendicular, this is perpendicular. This would be my orthos, I mean my circumcenter or my point of concurrency. And then from that point to each vertex would be congruent. It's well, you'd have to you'd have to draw. You, you won't have to draw it. Yeah, no, no, you won't have to draw. It. You'd have to you'd have to be able to find the midpoint. So you'd have to like have a measure a, a ruler, find the midpoint, and then a protractor to make sure it's perpendicular. You won't have to do, you won't have to do that. What you could have to do is if they give you the coordinate points, find where it is. If it was a right triangle, and that would be at the high. You'd have to find the midpoint of the hypotenuse. Yep. Okay, questions on perpendicular bisectors. Okay, then came angle bisectors. So these just bisect the angle. What's the name where they, where they meet? In center, good. Where does it always locate? Inside. The theorem related to the in center says from in center to the side of the triangle is congruent or is equal. If I divided each angle, this would be congruent to this, this to this, this to this. That would be your in center. And then from the in center to each side, which means it has to be perpendicular because you're showing distance from the in center to the side. This one is almost the same thing. Those pink segments would all be congruent. Median. All right, so a median by definition goes from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. On a diagram, you would find the midpoint of the opposite side and you would draw from the vertex directly to it. Its point of concurrency is called what? Centroid. Good. The centroid is located where? Always inside. And it's the two-thirds theorem. Okay. From vertex to centroid is two-thirds the length of the median. So if I wanted to continue, I would find the midpoint of each side.
and I would draw the line from the vertex to the midpoint. And this is again your two-thirds segment. So from the vertex to the point where they meet is two-thirds the length of the whole thing. If you want to find the coordinates on this one, you divide by three. So if I want to find the coordinates, I do x1 plus x2 plus x3 divided by three, and then y1 plus y2 plus y3 divided by three. But does this only work on centers? Correct. What about in centers? It doesn't work. Yeah. You mean like for like when you you're doing the application of the two thirds? Yeah, the warm up also asks you for the sides. Like it would also say maybe it's a centroid, and you'd have to find maybe one of the sides because it would give you that you, that you have to know that that's the midpoint, that kind of thing. Since we're not constructing, are we gonna ask, are they gonna ask us like um, which one is this? Is it like a centroid or a point or a medium or something? You don't have to identify it from a photograph, but there are questions. The things that will test your knowledge on those will be either. Here's a diagram, and point whatever is the centroid. So now you have to know that that means that's a two-thirds one. Or point whatever is a circumcenter. So now I have to know that that means from that point to the vertices are what's congruent. Point whatever is the in center, that means from the vertices to the sides are congruent, that kind of thing. And then you're going to get, I think there's three of them, like always, sometimes, never questions that asks about, which I'll, after I get through the last one, we'll kind of talk about some of those kinds of questions, yeah. But those will test, obviously, your knowledge of the definitions of the words. Okay, and then the last one was the altitude. And so the altitude goes vertex to the opposite side. So it's, well, it's perpendicular. Uh, perpendicular segment. Oh, I'd help if I could spell today. that connects the vertex to the opposite side or the line containing the opposite side if it's an obtuse triangle. What's it called where they meet? Ortho center. And these meet where? Oh, wait, what is it? On or out? Good, in on out. So acute in. Right on. This time at the right angle and obtuse out. That's the one where you'd have to like extend the sides of the triangle. So that's the one that gets weird. There is no theorem about an altitude. You'd have to like discover one. I feel like a lot of mathematicians have come before you to say that there is not one, but you can't just like make it up. I feel like if I Maybe that could be your life goal. Maybe that could be your life goal, Santi. Would you be famous? Yeah, be like Pythagoras. You could have a whole theorem named after you. Mars. Mars theorem. Can you draw it? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let me let everybody copy it down and then we'll do it. So the, the always, sometimes, never questions that could come from here could be like the perpendicular bisectors blank meet inside the triangle. And so that's sometimes because they meet in, on, or out. The perpendicular bisectors meet blank on a right triangle or blank outside a right triangle and they'd be never. So you have to know them so well that you could kind of pick and choose between those. It could also be like definition based. An angle bisector blank bisects the angle. That's gonna be always. 
Also, can one of these segments be the other? And the rule on that is always sometimes, okay? A perpendicular bisector, an angle bisector, a median, and an altitude can sometimes be each other. Because if I were to do any of these in an, in an equilateral triangle, they would all overlap. In an isosceles triangle, it sometimes overlaps. But the rule is sometimes. So perpendic perpendicular bisector can sometimes be an angle bisector. An angle bisector can sometimes be a median. A median can sometimes be an altitude. Okay? It is sometimes. And when that exists is either in an isosceles or an equilateral triangle. Okay? So it's possible for them to be each other. All right. So if you have an obtuse triangle. So I'm just going to give you the visual, but I don't want you to stress about it too much because you're not going to have to construct it. No. Yeah. I'm just doing this because Cal asked, but you, I mean, don't lose sleep over this sucker. All right, so if I'm trying to find the perpendicular bisector, I'd have to find the exact center of the side, which probably isn't even that. And then I'd have to find a right angle like that. And then I do the same thing on the other side. I'd find the center. And then I draw a perpendicular segment. Well, Correct. Ah, wait, that's not right. That's not right. That would be outside the ortho center, right? Ortho center. Yeah, both of them would be outside. Oh, I'm dumb. It's easier to use the altitude on notability because it like automatically does it. Thank you for showing Okay, so these are perpendicular bisectors. On an obtuse triangle, notice that they don't meet, right? I would literally have to extend them out beyond my triangle to get them to meet, and the circumcenter would be outside, okay? That's if it's perpendicular bisectors. If I did it... Wait. Yeah, so the perpendicular bisectors would be outside. But like... If I did it for... The altitudes. Now I have to go from the vertex to the perpendicular to the opposite side. Which works for the obtuse angle, but when I try to do it from the others, like if I try to go in here, let's see if it's going to work now. This is why this just doesn't like, there we go. If I try to get an angle that's a right angle on any point in that, it's not going to happen. I have to swing it outside. So I literally have to extend out the sides of the obtuse angle outside on both directions. And then I can get the right angle here, which is not perfect, but you get the point. And I can get the right angle here. And then those would meet over here. And that's the ortho center. No. So if you you'd have to you have to know that they they lie outside. So the two that have perpendicular parts to them, which are the altitude and the perpendicular bisector, are the in on outside, and then the two that are inside the angle bisector and the median are always inside. So that stuff you have to know. Um, you would have to know like, and then obviously you have to know the theorems. Questions? I do have a Quizlet. If you want it, you could study it. Like if you're a flashcard kid, then you could study it. But obviously, you need to be able to. I feel like the always, sometimes, never are going to be either super easy or they're going to stump you because you don't know it that well. So you got to make sure you know that stuff that well. And then obviously, there's a PDF um, quiz review for you to do tonight. Okay? The solutions are there. You don't need to turn this in. But you want to have this done so that tomorrow, if you come in, you have questions, I can answer it. And then you take your quiz. Questions for me now? Okay. I don't think it was a sneeze. So you will see something like this. This was in the homework and it was at the end of the 6-1 notes where you have to find the slope of the line that's given to you and then the midpoint and then you plug those two points into the point slope or into the y because that makes form. But you will get a question like that. So you want to make sure you're ready for that one too. What?